everyone and welcome. This is Chloe with Cousin DIY. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my most favorite all-time projects, I think. It is this um, cascading watering can of beads. I'm hoping you can see most of it at least. But after we get this all made, we'll be going outside. So I'm going to get set up and I'll be right back to get started. The first step is to count the number of holes around the circumference of your um, spout on the watering can. And in our case, it's 10. I ordered this one online. Um, I like the size and I like the way the handle was positioned on it. So we're going to make 10. Now uh, your spout may have more, more holes or fewer holes. So the length of your, the overall length of the strands and, and how many you'll need will depend on that. So I cut for starters a 26 inch length of eight pound monofilament and I'm going to slide a clear e-bead onto the bottom of that. I'm going to bring that monofilament back up around the bead down through the hole two times. Because this is going to be outside, I want to make sure everything is nice and sturdy and will tolerate wind, etc. So that now that I have that securely attached, I'm going to slide a crimp bead needle nose pliers and we're going to pinch really, really hard because we want this to be nice and secure. We're going to test it and it is, it's nice and secure. Next step is we're going to start our beading pattern. Now I had, I played around with the beads in the two bead mixes that um, you will see in our materials. And I came up with this pattern. I wanted it to look sparkly on the end. So I'm starting with these faceted clear beads and I'm going to put a clear e-bead and this is a, a faceted um, rondelle, clear faceted rondelle and another clear e-bead. And I'm going to separate my first several beads with that combination. So I'll just start adding these on. Now you may prefer a different combination or, or even different beads from the mix. Um, half the fun is making up your own pattern. So I think I'm going to oops, I'm going to go ahead and pour out these clear e beads. Make this a little easier. And then I'm just going to keep grabbing beads that I've already laid out in order and building my strand. I made a very similar watering can a few years ago here at work and so many people have commented on it and wanted to buy the beads to make it, etc, etc. So we decided to go ahead and make a project out of it. I'm going to go ahead and load on my beads with this combination of beads in between each larger bead I put on until I get to a point where I'm switching the dividing beads. Okay, at this point, uh, 
I'm going to use a little different combination, very similar in between my beads. I'm going to use a, a clear e-bead and then I'm going to use these little sparkly bugle bead two beads in between my clear e-beads. They'll have a little sparkle to them. And this is going to be my lower most, one of my two lower most strands that will be falling out of the spout. And I'd like to create kind of a cascading effect so that the lower ones are a little bit longer than the higher ones when, it, when it's hanging. So I'm going to decrease the, um, I'm going to start by adding extra spacer beads on the end and then I'm going to decrease as I go. So on this one I'm going to add six, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Well, actually I'm adding five more. I, I started with the last one in my pattern right here, and then I'm going to add five more. Now at this point, we're ready to attach our bead strand to uh, to a earring wire. Uh, believe it or not, this was the best way I could figure out how to attach these strands so they would hang from the spout, holes in the spout. So I found it was necessary to cut a little bit of that lower part off. So we'll cut that right about there. You can see how much I cut. Next, we're going to thread or string on two crimp tubes. These are a little longer and stronger than crimp beads. I'm going to put those on. Run that through the hole in the ear wire and then back down Oops. Back down through the two crimp tubes. And then I am going to, I don't want this to be so tight on the strand that, that my strand will kink up or it won't fall nice and straight. So you have to take that into consideration before you go ahead and and close up. And that takes a little bit of experimenting. Once you find that you have it adjusted where you know it's going to work, we're going to close each crimp tube separately. We'll do the first part and then we're going to squeeze those tubes together, just like that. And the reason I use two is that we, again, want it really secure because it will probably be blowing in the wind outside. We want to make sure it's good and sturdy. So at this point, we'll turn that off. And I'm going to go ahead and make nine more strands. And instead of making you sit through that with me, I'll go ahead and do that and we'll be right back.
Now that I have all my strands made and attached to their ear wires, it's time for me to attach them to the holes in the spout. Now, I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to go up. And the bottommost strand is, I'm going to slide these over, is my longest strand because I want that to hang down the longest. And my, my hole in this particular spout, that hole is centered in the bottom. So next, I made two slightly shorter strands for the two holes on either side. So now um, I made these one bead shorter and these are going to go to the left and the right. The same here, one bead shorter left and right. You get the idea. The next two that are the same length, but they're slightly shorter. And then the shortest strand of all in the top. So when we cascade it, they have a little bit of a, a slant to them, like so. Let's go outside and see what it looks like hanging out. cascading watering can. We'd love to see it. Please share it with us on Instagram at hashtag create with cousin. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time. Bye.